Welcome, friends, to Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter. We bring you the greatest female voices in the music industry. From the artists, songwriters, and producers, to managers and executives, and all the women who make the music industry what it is today. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, friends, to another episode of Crazy Women Country. I'm Donna. I'm Paula, and today we have Bailey James with us. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? Fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Oh, no worries. No worries. So tell all our Crazy Women fans, who is Bailey James? Bailey James. Um, she is a multi-genre singer-songwriter. I'm originally from Philly, but I moved to Nashville about four years ago to pursue country music. And somehow I ended up making a little bit of everything being in Nashville, a little bit of blues, soul, country, rock. Um, it all kind of came together. That's cool. That's cool. Definitely hear it in your music, the different songs, you know, just the different collaborations there and, and one's yeah, more soulful. I- I, I can't have any limits. If I put limits on myself, um, like even when I write, I write all kinds of crazy things. If someone saw my notes, I'm taking my notes to the grave. No one's looking at my notes in my <laughs> phone. But um, I don't put limits on it just because at some point I hope the music business just becomes genreless and it's just music. Mm. Yes. Oh. That would be amazing. That would be so cool. That would be awesome. Um, <clears throat> so... Your most recent single, uh, 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 I've lost it, is... Oh, for you? That's the one, thank you. <laughs> just it, just, 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 just. Um, It's amazing, absolutely love it. And I have to say, you have one line in that song, which I love, which is, um, another lover to get under to get over you. Yeah. <laughs> <I love> that. <laughs> that is so cool. Thank it's, you. It's, it's just, you know, it's just so good. I mean, how many people bounce from person to person and then you're saying this in this song, you don't need that to get over someone. Okay. Yeah, I, so my thing is I don't bounce from person to person, oddly. Um, I, after a breakup, kind of take the time for myself, which I think is really important. Um, mm-hmm. And I wrote that song, actually not even in the midst of a breakup. I was just, I had come into a write and he had this idea and I'm like, you know what? I feel that way all the time and it and it was um it just kind of came together and it was like the perfect song for me and now I am going through a breakup and I'm like yeah yeah this song this song is great (laughs) and so it's really funny I kind of manifested it into my life through my music that's perfect I love it yeah from a lyrics perspective I'm like those are awesome lyrics like I just like some days you're like, oh, that's great. I wish I could have wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. The lyrics are super important to me. Uh, I try to make sure that I'm not just writing for it to sound good. I'm also writing um, lyrically. I try to be on like a Amy Winehouse, Kurt Cobain level. Those are like my um, my people who I listen to and I look up to. And their lyrics were so diverse and they really got you thinking. Mm. And that's where I want to be. So that's where I try to write to. Absolutely. Those are, those are great people to look up to for lyrics. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now that you've mentioned Amy Winehouse, who are some of the women that have inspired you to do music? Patsy Cline was the first woman who inspired me just because I heard her music and I felt every word she was saying. I might have not, I was like 11. So I hadn't gone through heartbreak or anything she had gone through, but I felt, the pain in her voice. And I was like, gosh, I want to be able to make people feel the same way I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And so I really loved Amy. I mean, Patsy, I love Amy, obviously. (laughs) Um, She's one of my biggest inspirations just because she was raw and truthful too. And it it showed in her music. Um, I love Amy, Patsy, Janice, kind of the crazy soul women. That's who I go for. That's perfect. I'm perfect. And then, obviously, I was checking out a lot of your videos, and you had Bitter, which obviously I'm assuming came before um, Get Over. And that's another song with that 
amazing line of it of can't trust a tongue that has a bitter heart. Oh, uh, your heart is bitter. Sorry, get the boyfriend that way. That's such a great line. <laughs> Thank you. Bitter, I did right. Um, that is actually, about a friendship that went sour. Everyone thinks it's real. It was a friendship. And me and Mia, Mia's one of my closest friends in Nashville, Mia Morris, amazing artist on her own. Mm -hmm. uh, we were just both in that kind of mindset. We were very bitter and we were very angry. And what better way to express it than in a song? So I definitely have said things when I'm pissed off that I didn't mean. <laughs> I think everyone does. Oh, yeah. um, that, th that's one of my things. I got a big mouth. And so when I'm mad, well, you're going to hear it. And um, <laughs> it comes out in my music. That's very cool. And you can, that song has a real sort of rockier, kind of a grungier type feel compared to, you know, the most recent single, which is, you know, it's, it's amazing to watch you bounce between these different times. It's just, you know, and you do it so easily. It's just Thank you. I think... Mia produced the song, did, uh, recorded all the instruments, and Mia's very rock, punk based, and that had a big influence. And I love grunge, grunge, like 90s grunge. When I am feeling down is what I listen to because it's so, just so angsty and not afraid to show exactly how you're feeling, so. Yeah, they put it right out there. You can see the, as you've increased, like as you've grown, you can see the difference in, in those singles that they've been released too. Definitely. Oh yeah. Oh gosh. My teenage years. Whew, I started making music when I was 11 and I really didn't have anything to write about. So I kind of wrote about what I knew, mm -hmm. but I think as you start growing up, you really start to have those experiences, that first heartbreak and um, like the good moments too, like, like, finding your first love and hanging out with your friends and doing stupid teenager stuff like an over you everyone was so afraid because i guess they still think i'm 11 i'm like no i'm 18 i'm 18 people <laughs> um and it was it's a big difference it's I, I guess i started writing my own music when i was about 14 and that's when everything changed and people were like oh so this is <laughs> this is how she really is <laughs> It's very cool. Oh. I love it. It's just amazing. So yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, so, cool. Sorry. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> no, I was just waiting for you. Like, so Paul's going to start us off with some fun, quick fire questions. <laughs> I was going to. Yeah, I was kind of just thinking it. You know, the brain's working. Sorry, I'm a bit slow today. I'm a bit like. <laughs> You'll have to forget yeah, Paula. Man. She's in Spain, so it's like ten thirty at night for her. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite late I here, mean, so sometimes my brain doesn't work. It's the full moon. People, we have a full moon tonight, and full mm -hmm. moons make people crazy. That's what it is. That's it. See, it's the full moons made my Just put it on the full moon. moon. Yeah, blame it on the full <laughs> moon. I love that. That's a perfect thing to do. So, yeah, quick fire questions. I love this part. So, these are just fun questions to get to know you a little bit better. And, um, yeah, they're always fun. So it's cool. Are you ready for this? Yes. Um, early bird or night owl? I'm a night owl. I just live better at night. <laughs> I'm more productive at night. That's cool. I like that. Um, what sitcom family would you be a member of? What sitcom family? Um, well, this isn't really a sitcom, but Shameless. I've been obsessed. <laughs> I've been obsessed with Shameless recently. And um, I kind of relate to some of those things. Like growing up, I, I like had a weird childhood, so I can relate to it. I feel like I would fit in. Oh, it's cool a great dysfunctional that. family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if we had a look through your iPod or phone, wherever you hold your music. What would be your guilty pleasure music? My guilty pleasure music is Slipknot. Ah. <laughs> Slipknot and most people are like doesn't that like scare you <laughs> that kind of <laughs> but the music like I love Slipknot I love um Ozzy and Marilyn I like really hard rock that's my guilty pleasure that's perfect that makes you that's amazing <laughs> considering you sing sort of country type stuff and then you, you've got this you know obsession with Slipknot and Ozzy and 
my only months of like <laughs> I love it. I, I, I don't know how people don't love it. My mom's like that's so loud and angry. Uh, so great. Some of it I do. When they get into that real screechy yelly type thing, I'm like, yeah, okay, you can keep that. But some of the others I mean I grew up on Queen and you know Queen's amazing. and things like mm-hmm. that. So, you know, I can appreciate most of it, but when they do start screaming, I'm like, nah. I try I try not to listen to too much of that. I just there's a few slipknot songs when I'm working out. They get me in a whole different mode. I'm like a beast. So. <laughs> you need so I have to ask, how about to... how about Lincoln Park? You know what? I haven't listened to a lot of Lincoln Park and you know how many people have told me to listen? I need to. Yeah. It's a sign. Um I love like I love that kind of music alternatives type stuff. Yeah. And Lincoln Park is more I think lyricy and mm-hmm. not as so I push my fingers into my eyes type stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. So it's getting that, that fine line between the two. Yeah, it reminds yeah, me of like the, I, the Nirvana, how they kind of you know, like they had their lyrics and, and the music and, and that's kind of the same, like I don't want to say the same thing, but kind of similar like that. Yeah. So I, I agree. I when I listen to Nirvana, I'm listening to the lyrics and not all the stupid stuff. Kurt Cobain did just yeah. because he could. Yeah. Um, and that's hard for some people to like realize that he's doing it because he can. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. So what's the weirdest, cutest, I don't know, strangest thing a fan has ever done for you? Got a tattoo of my name and my song on their arm. Wow. I know. That's dedication. It was, it, it oh, was yeah. um, it was a song called I Won't Be Silent for the Jason Foundation, a foundation I'm a part of, um, just to bring awareness to suicide prevention. And they got a tattoo, and I thought that was amazing. I mean, I have a tattoo, and I, when I got it, I was like, okay, so this is permanent. And for them to do that, it just it meant yeah. a lot. That's cool. I love that. Okay, boots or heels? Heels. What's your favorite drink? What's my favorite drink? Non alcoholic Dr. Pepper. <laughs> That's my uh, favorite. Ask is, are you old enough to drink? Uh, I'm not old enough to drink, but I'm not going to say that I haven't because I was a crazy, angsty teenager. <laughs> I <laughs> still am. I'm a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We'll just, just don't run that. <laughs> 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 we don't want anyone to get into trouble here, you know. <laughs> They're going to come at me. We saw that we have evidence that you underage <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we would just step right the, the, the real question is, who has an underage drink in America? Yeah. I know, I know, literally. <laughs> that must be it. <laughs> um, what is, is your favorite holiday? Christmas, because that's... Um, me and my family go big for Christmas, and so... One year we'll do like crazy hats, crazy slippers, crazy, and we'll do a competition who can like make the most insane or creative thing. Um, and we just all get together. It's like our big holiday. So Christmas and then Halloween. That's perfect. I love them. Um, what's your favorite animal? Oh, what's my favorite animal? Um, well, I just got a new kitten. So I think I'm a cat lady. Um, I named him Mr. Big because. He's got a huge personality, and it's a Sex in the City reference, but... Um, I was wondering if it was Sex in the City or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mr. Big. He remi- That's like what my little kid reminds me of. He's freaking crazy. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm a cat lady at heart. That's cool. I'd like to introduce you to Tigger here. She says oh, hi. You- oh, there's- my mom just brought him out. Oh, he's brought me insane. <laughs> this is... Oh, no! <gasps> Mr. Big. Oh, he's gorgeous. Oh, you miss me? Oh, look at the oh, baby. We are having a cat party today. Yes. You say oh. hi. He's so crazy, though. He, like, doesn't, he's not that big, but he, like, scratches and bites. He's crazy. <laughs> That's pretty cool. At um, that age. He'll grow up eventually. Yeah. He'll stop biting yeah. so hard and scratching so much. Yeah. 
<laughs> you find him climb, climbing the curtains, you know. <laughs> Does that? He climb. We we made a little we, like we got one of those um, little cat play things for him because he was climbing my curtains and he was like gonna hurt himself. He's this big. Yeah, it, yep. <laughs> it's not good. They have no fear. It's just like yeah, they don't. Yeah, <laughs> we had rescued um, a black cat and she used to climb up my leg, like literally, just so I would hold her. And I'm like, okay. Like, what are you doing? I know. Like, it was, it, yeah, it was, it was hysterical. They're funny. That's how he is. He climbed up my leg today, which hurt, of course. Mm -hmm. I'm like, gosh, your little claws. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> <I love that. laughs> um, okay. If you could add somebody to Mount Rushmore, who would it be and why? Amy Winehouse, because she's a legend, and that's all. <laughs> <laughs> That is going to be different. I love that. That's very cool. Um, okay. What was your first concert you went to? Mm, Taylor Swift. When I was, it was her Fearless or Speak Now tour. Um, and I just remember getting super hyped on Cotton Candy and like thinking she was the most amazing person in the world. And like, I wanted to be like her someday. That's very cool. That's very cool. <laughs> Definitely. What's your favorite color? My favorite color is red. What's the best thing since sliced bread? The best thing since sliced bread. Um, I think the best thing since sliced bread. Crap. I don't even. <laughs> the fake cheese. The fake cheese that's not actually dairy. Because dairy like breaks me out. So fake cheese or like pulled pork. Some kind of food. <laughs> <laughs> Can I feel like that? <laughs> right there with you. We like food too. So yeah. 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 <laughs> Who doesn't, right? Right. If you could talk to anyone, alive or dead, who would it be and what would you want to talk about? I would talk to who would I I would talk to my grandma um on my dad's side and just talk to her about her life because he says we're twins. Um, and she was like a very eccentric lady. She liked to go barefoot like me. I'm like constantly barefoot because I'm like hippy dippy and think I'm picking up on the energy of the earth. I'm probably not, but <laughs> um, you could be. I could be. I I would talk to her and just be like, "So, how was your life?" <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. So, if you weren't doing music, what do you think you would be doing? I think I wanted to be, this is really funny. I wanted to be a brain surgeon when I was little. No idea why. <laughs> Everyone had like normal thoughts. And I was like, I want to be a brain surgeon, but I have shaky hands. And so it wasn't going to work out. Um, but I would probably be, I'd probably be in the health field. I like, um, like I'm very into surgery. So probably something to do with that. Wonderful. Cool. Until I have to get it. And then I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all that way. We're like, no, no, we're good. We're fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. If you were a Disney character, what character would you be? I, if I were a Disney character, let me think. Um, I'd be Cinderella. Or no, I would be Snow White. No. What's that one? Who's the one who marries the beast? Oh. Bella from Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, yeah. I would be Bella. Bella fits me. Bella fits. <laughs> I love that. That's very cool. So, do you have a favorite flavor of ice cream, or it doesn't necessarily have to be dairy, it can be non dairy? <laughs> okay. Okay. Because I'm um, a cashew ice cream person, you know, or almond ice cream. Wow. No, I do still have dairy because I had, I actually had dairy today. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, chocolate ice cream chocolate ice cream or coffee ice cream those are my two and i kind of switch between them i'll get sick of the one and then go to the other and then go back and but with no toppings or anything i'm super bland so sounds like those would be a good mix though <laughs> chocolate coffee they probably yeah. would like chocolate no i had a coffee fudge one time and it was actually dairy free mm -hmm. oh my gosh it was so good i couldn't even tell mm -hmm. That's good What's one of your favorite snacks? One of my favorite snacks. Um, weirdly, I really like Chobani yogurt. Don't know why, but like 
I'll eat like two of them and be fine. And that's what I'll eat as a snack. I used to really like Cheez-Its, but I eat them so much and then I get sick of them. Hmm. So hypothetically, if I told you I need to hide a body, do you know a good place? I do think I know. Well, let me think. Now I'm thinking about it. (laughs) (laughs) Probably, probably I would, I don't know, like a, not a lake. They'll find it. Somewhere where they couldn't find it. (laughs) There's my answer. (laughs) (laughs) That's the best answer ever. Yeah, perfect. (laughs) Uh, We can tell you don't watch the ID channel for sure. Because you don't have all these ideas to do with it. The weird thing is, like, I I have anxiety, like, pretty bad. And I think every creative person has some kind of mental thing, because why would we be making music? But um, I watch true crime all the time, all the time. And then I'll, like, sit there at night and think about it and, like, not be able to go to sleep. But it's just a reoccurring thing. I love true crime. Wonderful. But they always get caught, because they never do it right. So, you know. <laughs> that's, that's, like, they always miss something. Well, except yeah. for Earl. Earl's been gone, you know, and no one cared Earl was gone. <laughs> and the song Goodbye Earl. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's true. That's true. That was very quick. That was very yeah. quick. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a few seconds. Earl, Earl, ah, I know. I was like, Earl who? <laughs> <laughs> that was very quick. <laughs> and lately I've been stuck on the uh, No Body, No Crime by Taylor Swift lately. I don't know why, but, you know. <laughs> really? I... You know what? I haven't been able to listen to some, like, some of her albums. I'll listen to a couple songs and then I'll be like, uh, I think this is for a different time in my life and I'll come back to it when, I, when I'm, when i like, most into it. So I've been on the Lover album. Is that what it's called? Because mm-hmm. um, that's when she's all happy and in love. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's perfect. So what would be a good theme song for your life right now? Um, theme song. Uh, there's this song by this band called Sawed Off Shotgun, and it's not as bad as it sounds. It's not as bad as it sounds, but it's kind of about like, um, like survive, just like normal everyday life for people who are going through things. And mm-hmm. you know, I'm going through a breakup and just growing up and learning all. It's like a lot. So that would be my theme song or like my song train wreck. One of them. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> Don't worry, people. I go to therapy. We're all good. <laughs> She's fine. Don't you worry. <laughs> She's a typical teenager. <laughs> yeah. I think, I, I think more teenagers need to realize that like literally we're all just like balls of hormones just walking around. <laughs> That's yeah. so, cool. oh. <laughs> so tell our audience what song or CD or album or whatever artist we should listen to before we die. Back to Black by Amy Winehouse, the whole album. Nice. Um, or or Crazy by Patsy Klein. Either one. Both. Fantastic. Both. They should listen to all of them. <laughs> Definitely. I know. Like, just just like, listen to them on repeat. Like Back to Black was such. Even learning about Amy Winehouse, I just became obsessed with her style and her like attitude. Because in interviews, she would just sit there and be like, "Yeah, I don't really like anyone." <laughs> 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 and I love that. I love the um, the just being just herself. The, mm. Yeah, she's just being herself. Mm. That's it. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. Who is your favorite CWC host? Both of you. <laughs> that was too cool. That was That's a great cool. answer. <laughs> I'm going to start slipping it in somewhere else to see if I can catch somebody out. <laughs> I know. I was like, both of you. You can see that fear. It was like, no, <laughs> I've got this. I've got this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that was very cool. Very, very cool. So, um, tell everybody what have you got planned for the rest of 2021 yeah um i'm releasing a new single to radio for the first time in about three years it's called finally free um and it's kind of about i guess the 
my transformation after my breakup. Like I really found myself and um, I think I lo you, you sometimes lose yourself for a bit after you go through something like that. And so finally free is about me becoming finally free. So that's a big, big thing. We're filming in the video Wednesday for finally free. So mm -hmm. new singles, lots of new music coming, um, hoping to start touring again with my band, which is weird. Cause I felt like COVID was never like the quarantine was never going to end. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited doing music again. And I just graduated high school. So adult thing. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Up to be. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm homeschooled. So I was like, I want to have a graduation. So I'm going to do one back in Pen Pennsylvania with my family and celebrate. That'd be good. That's wonderful. We want to see pictures. Yes, I'm going to. But I got my. I'm getting my um like cap and gown off of Amazon. <laughs> if anyone needs one, just let me know. That's cool. I might have one laying around if you need one. I have. I think I have a True. blue and a black one somewhere. See, I I just want to have the little thing I can put in my car. The little 2021. The tassel, yeah. Yeah, and it's weird because some people are having graduations, some aren't. It's super weird for us kids who are graduating right now. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit mad. It's crazy. Yeah. It's but just think, hold on to it until you're famous, and you can sell it for millions. There you go. That's true. That's true. <laughs> they do that. They do that with like. Um, I'm a huge fan of Amy Style, and I love pinup, and that's kind of how I dress on my own, anyways. So, they're selling her stuff for like millions. Mm -hmm. Which is crazy. I wish they wouldn't, though. I just want it in a museum just to look at it. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, put it into a museum, let people, let a fan really see it rather than sort of making money. Yeah. From it. But uh, yeah, that would be, uh, yeah. be cool. I think um, that's what's so cool, like with Dollywood and stuff, and how she has all of her, you know, not all of them, but the majority of them. Tater, get now my dog's coming. Tater, <laughs> move. It's okay. That's, that's what makes it crazy here. <laughs> The more the merrier. I need Tater after Kurt Cobain, and well, he became the personality in a dog. So, <laughs> there you go. Great, I love that. The madder, the better. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's been a pleasure having you today. Yes. Thank you, thank you, guys, thank you. for having me. And you are welcome back anytime. Yes. Thank you, Tater. Stop. <laughs> ah. He's like in the corner. He's like, I just want to be in the, the video too. Come on. Why can't I, I interview? <laughs> well, make sure you check out all of Bailey's socials and follow her for the newest releases coming out. And I hope you all have a great day. Have a good one, guys. Bye. If you enjoyed today's episode of Crazy Women Country, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Be sure to click the subscribe button for new interviews weekly. And thank you, friends, for joining us today on Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter.